What's going on guys? Welcome to Horse Talk Live. It's Michael Gascon, the horse guru, and I am coming with you today with Miss Benny. Benny here is a three-year-old Mangalaga filly. Mangalagas or marchadores uh, are Brazilian walking horses, basically. They're gated horses from the country of Brazil. And this young lady has been with us a little over a month, and we've cult started her and got her working, uh, got her under saddle, done all of our cult start process and the respect series. So basically she will walk trot canter, she'll go over obstacles, she goes on the trail, uh, she goes wherever we want her, and now we are looking to get her gate going. And I'm gonna show you guys, a lot of people are always asking me about the first time that I put a curve bit on the horse, what it looks like when I'm ready. For this young lady, she's already familiar with a halter, a horsemanship halter, and she's familiar with a snaffle. Now I'm looking to put a snaffle with shanks on her. And this will be the first time that I really drive her up into the bridle. And working with her today, I will be using this. So you'll notice this is a smooth, smooth mouth snaffle, and it has a shank on it. It also has an extra ring for the snaffle, just in case the horse needs a little help transitioning from the snaffle to the shank, you can put your reins on the side here and it's just a shank. Also for the first time for her, I'll be using a cavison. A cavison is simply a string that's gonna be going to help her close her mouth. Depending on where you go or where you don't go, this is either the most amazing thing or the worst thing. With my Western mentors, a lot of times they, they're not putting a cavison on a horse unless there's an issue. For all my gated riders and my English riders, I was born and raised with a cavison. They told me as a child, anytime that you put a bit on a horse's mouth, you put this on. The only thing this does is doesn't allow the horse to gape its mouth. In my professional opinion, when I'm trying to get a horse off of the bridle, trying to get the horse softer and easier, you will see me go without a cavison because I'm getting them on a loose rein. I'm getting them off of my bridle. For this young lady, I'm gonna to try to collect her up and drive her forward. So you'll see me putting a cavison on her to make her more comfortable taking that bit. So we'll pull this halter off. Again, the biggest thing whenever you're going to start putting, start putting a shank bit on them is that they already give the pressure. When people talk about, oh, shank bits are horrible. Well, that's interesting because the best reined horses and the best dressage horse in the world, they can all carry a, a shank. Then again, they can all go with just a snap or a halter because they're so broke. But the thing is, those horses are already educated before they get that. Where we run into to problem with our human horse interaction is when people try to skip education, try to skip communication and education and just get that horse to stop by putting a bigger bit on it. I'm gonna put about two fingers this way, stacked on top of each other under that curb chain. Nice smooth curb chain that's going on under her. One wrinkle in the, in the mouth. All of these are just rules of thumb. I'm gonna clip my reins on here to the shank. And I'm gonna show you guys the secret sauce. The way that these horses transition so well from one bridle to the next is we always have common grounds. We're always taking these horses and whenever that we have something that they don't know that's new, the common ground is the respect series and first grade. I'm sent her up here. And if you've seen any of our programming, you know that we love to lunge a horse at a walk right around us, just like this. So if this horse, like, like her, she's been here a little over a month. So for a little over a month, every single day before we ride, she has a little bit of time of doing this just to see how she's reacting to the bridle that we have on her. So whenever I want to move her shoulder over, I bring her face towards her shoulder and you see her front end crossing over. Whenever I want to move her butt, I bring her face towards her butt. You see her back end crossing over. And again, this is her first with the shank bit. But since she already knows the answer, it's not a big deal. Since she already knows how to do this exercise with a halter, since she already knows how to do this exercise with a full cheek snaffle, that shank really doesn't bother her because she knows the answer. So many times when horses have an issue, have an issue with the pressure, it's because they simply don't know how to relieve themselves of it. 
So they go to bucking or kicking out or doing something funky trying to get away from it. Now that I see she's okay there, I'm going to put my foot in the stirrup, mount up. The first thing I'm going to do on my horse is sit still. Horses are creatures of habit. If you get on and go, get on and go before long, they'll go before you get on. Now I'm just going to grab the center of my reins here and slide my hand down the rein and see how she reacts to that new bridle. And I really like that she's breaking from the pole there. What, what that means is that she's dropping her nose towards her chest. Her pole is the top of her head here. And when people say breaking from the pole, they talk about this hinge of her nose being able to come down. Just like so. And right now, before I ask her to gate, before I try to drive her off or do anything, I'm just going to walk her around and see how soft and easy she is. She's nice and relaxed. Just at this walk here, we're going to do the exact same thing we did from the ground. Watch how I'll get the bend in her here. Then I'll bring that rein towards her shoulder. See her shoulder moving over? That's what we want to see. Now we're going to bring that face towards her butt. There we go towards her shoulder. All this kind of movement I like to have before I start asking the horse to gait. Because if you start by asking the horse to gait, they're gonna get stiff and rigid in a straight line. And then whenever you can't get that horse gating and they get sent to a trainer like me to, to get them gating, now I have to teach them how to be soft and easy to get them gating. So it's a lot easier for me when they don't know what they're doing to get them soft and easy like this and just very forgiving to the bridle, getting to move their body parts. So right here, you see how she's stuck? Look how I'll pick her up. And you look how high I can actually pick her up here and get that butt to move. I want her to know, just because I have a shank on her, that I can still move her butt around with it. There we go. All right, we're gonna give her a stop. And what we're looking to do is give her a gradual stop and have our hands locked in place so if she throws her head or gets fussy or upset that she gets behind the bridle. There we go. When I'm driving forward, my legs are on, my legs are on. I have my hands already locked in place here. And take my legs off, ho. Oh. Good girl. If she throws her head, it's okay. That's the biggest misconception is that the horse has to look comfortable from the very beginning all the time. Well, if you believe that, you haven't got a lot of horses that don't know what to do doing it. In that time of them tossing their head here, or tossing their head there, horses that are tossing their head or having a hard time with the bridle, they either don't respect your hands or bridle or you're moving them. So I know I have her respect. That's what first grade from the ground did whenever I moved her head and got her body parts to move. Now it's just my job to, to leave my hands at home. And if she's gonna throw her head or get fussy or shake, that she runs into my hands that aren't giving, aren't moving. All right, now it's time that everybody's been waiting for. We're gonna see if we can get this young lady gating for the first time. Now, collection, is how you get gait. Collection is a word that's so vague that a lot of you are confused about what it means. Collection is simply the relationship between the gas and the brakes. So if the horse doesn't respect your bridle and you crop on them to gait, they may just go faster or run away or run through your bridle or kick out. If the horse is very respectful and gives you their face nice, so they give the, the brakes well, but then they won't go, again, you're gonna run into issues where that horse is shutting down and not wanting to go. So we need her to be able to do both. We need to be able to drive her forward as she's giving her face, hence the, the, the shanks to help. Now I know what you're thinking out there, do I need shanks to get my horse gating? No, absolutely not. A lot of horses, most of our horses, will already be gating by this stage in the, the training without even doing gait training. Just by getting them soft and easy on the halter, driving them forward, getting them soft and easy on the snaffle, driving them forward, she wasn't one that fell in. She has a nice big floaty trot, and we're going to try to get her from that trot into a gate. So we have that shank on her to try to help make it easier for us to get her compact, getting those back feet to land first. So what I want to see are these back feet to land first. It's going to cause two things. If she's trotting, which that's what she does, her head's kind of down. She's kind of heavy on the forehand. She's leaving her butt behind her, and she's kind of trotting like a quarter horse. 
I would like to drive her forward with a little bend from the beginning. A lot of folks want to grab that horse in a straight line and then spur or crop them into the bridle, but that makes for an anxious horse a lot of times. And it gets a horse that sometimes they gate, which is why people do it. But a lot of times it'll get them where, where they're real nervous and they're buzzy. If we can get her driving in this bend in one rein, she's a lot, lot less likely to have any issues there. And she's going to be a lot more comfortable going forward. And I'll show you exactly what I mean. Whenever I come here, I'm going to look to get her eye. Here I can see her left eye. I'm gathering up the reins, picking up my hands. And then I'm going to ask her without giving her a face for energy. So head a little bent. Every now and then, there we go. So you see she's picking her head up a little bit. So she's gating there. She looks a little fussy in the face, which is okay. She's never really been trapped before. And oh. So right there, and she gets the center, I'll leave her alone. So what you saw right there is just by picking her up here and putting her face to the side, immediately her feet did whatever I, what I wanted them to do. But her face, she's trying to pick her nose up a little bit, which is okay. The whole time that we've been riding her for this month, we've been riding her around just like this, where we give her her face and just tell her, hey, go through the water, go play soccer, go run with those other horses, pony, be pony, uh, do all these things, but do it on a loose rein, just like that. So she's been moving around. She's been moving around kind of like this. And if you've had a horse at, at home that's just doing this and moseying around, that doesn't mean that they're not gated. So right here, this is basically where she's been comfortable. We've taught her how to move here, how to move her shoulder over. And you see she's very comfortable there, more so than when I drive her into the bridle. But that's this, this is her first day of driving into a bridle and being trapped by the bridle. So look at her face, see how, how relaxed it is. These are the perks of Colt starting your gated horse first. Instead of just trying to gate from day one, you will have a horse that can trot, that can canter. Look at this little baby, a little under a month under, under saddle, and she already canters off. And oh, she stops at a canter just by taking your legs off without pulling. So these are gonna be your perks of starting your horse like this and going through the respect series, doing the boring stuff first. I know a lot of my gated folks, they just wanna to get to gating. Well, it's the equivalent of having a kid and being saving so much money for them to go to Harvard, but you're not helping them with their homework in kindergarten and first grade. If you don't help them get through high school, they won't get into Harvard. It's the same thing with this horse. For her future success, we needed to get her broke first. Now we can start asking of her. So again, watch the transition. You just saw me kind of leave her alone and let her go forward for that stuff. Now, whenever we ask her to gate, pick up my hands. Already, she's picking up her head. I have her off center. Now I'm gonna. There we go. One, two, three, four. The reason I have her off center is whenever I kick her, or I press her to, I kick her or ask her to go forward. Ah! Since she's off center, it's very difficult for her to argue with my, with my reins. And oh, she gets stuck there. I just keep this hand in. There we go until she gets where I'm asking. Oh, good girl. Look how when I stop with her head a little bit to the inside. I stopped, I left my hand, I never even pulled, I just took my feet off of her. She tried to throw her head to the opposite side, found her way to comfort, and now when I do the exact same thing again, oh, she feels that pressure, she gets off of it. Okay, so you may be wondering, why am I acting ridiculous? Why am I kissing and kicking and jumping and surges? The reason's simple. A lot of folks will spur and whip a horse to, to drive their butt under them. I just want to have her off center where she doesn't feel comfortable pushing against me or trying to take my bridle from me. And then I want to kiss to her, or make funny noises. And, and those little moments of, and where she holds her breath, what's happening is she's picking her, 
She's picking her shoulders up. She's driving her butt underneath her and creating a smaller package. When she does that, her back feet land first. And that's when you see her smoothing out. And then when she relaxes a little bit, she goes back to trotting. And then I kiss to her again or, or do something sporadic again. And she picks her butt up. We are going to make that one, two, three, four, that real smooth gait. We are going to make that just muscle memory. Over the coming days, over the coming weeks, we're just going to drive her into it, drive her into it. You saw from the beginning, she was, she was set and prepped. From, from the beginning, she hopped right into it. Her stiffer side, she hopped into it, but was a little bit more inconsistent. The softer they are on the face, the more you can drive their butt towards their face without them trying to canter off or go faster. Notice in between all that shenanigans, just like horsemanship, just like everything else, we just stand still on loose rein. Notice before I ask her to go, whenever we're just walking here, I gather her that inside rein a little bit, pick my hands up, look up, sit up. There we go. And I can hear under me. One, two, three, four, one, two. Okay, she relaxed there. She wants the canner. There we go. Nice. Good girl. She took about three quarters of a lap gating. Pluck, 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 pluck. And I can feel it in my butt. You can count it if you watch the video. When she's going pluck, 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 I'm counting in my head. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. I can feel and hear that her feet are hitting independently. When she relaxes, I can hear her trotting. Pluck, 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 pluck. That's when I reached out and you see I bumped her. I bumped her with my, the inside of my stirrup on her shoulder and that made her pick up her shoulder and drive her butt under her. And when she did that, she snapped right back in the gate. Well, just like everything else, if she is getting pressured with what we don't want and she's getting released for what we do want, very quickly, gating is going to be very easy for her because she's going to say, wait, wait a second. If I move my feet like this, if I keep my butt under me, they leave me alone. If I flatten back out and let my butt behind me without them giving me a loose rein, so I want you to think about this. If you want the best of both worlds, if you want a gated horse like this, that can be the same as a quarter horse in every other scenario, can spin, slide, turn, go rope, uh, do an obstacle course, train them on a loose rein first. Train them to move their body parts, train them to rein a little bit, train them to, to rope a little bit, neck rein a little bit. But everything that we do Western and everything we do relax, trail, obstacle, everything, the reins are down. And the only time we pick those reins up are when we're gonna gate you're going to have the best of both worlds. You're going to have a horse that can pick up and gate. And you drop the reins and you're right back to that wonderful trail horse that you had. A lot of people get stuck with one or the other. If they have a gated horse that's real lazy and a trail horse, he doesn't really gate well. So he kind of mopes around. Or they have a horse that gates well, but it's always hot and has a hard time walking on a loose rein. If you want two different horses in the same one, you have to be two different people in the same person. You have to be, here's my gated frame. Hey, let's go, let's go, come on. And here's my trail walk. Here's my canner. Here's my trot here. My body's completely relaxed. My reins are down. Her head is down. The energy's off. And whenever I pick those reins up and pick my body back up, that's gate. Pluck, 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 pluck. Watch this setup again. We're just gonna do this departure just the same way that if we were working a Mustang or a quarter horse or a warm blood, we would work canter departure after canter departure after canter departure to make it smooth and easy and nice. We're gonna do the same thing with our gated horse. Every time that we can stop and her butt's under her, she'll start with her butt's under her. A pro tip, make sure whenever you ask the horse to go forward that you don't give them the reins. Don't give the reins for them to go forward. If we have a little contact and drive that horse forward, now I said contact, I didn't say pull on the horse and inhibit their forward. Just watch whenever I drive her forward, I pick her up. She's here. Notice I'm not gonna give her her reins, I'm just gonna put energy with my legs. Notice if she tries to canter there, that's okay. I just touch her a little off center. There we go.
right there when she gets a little busy in the face i just keep driving her forward and keep that right hand touching until she gets that bend that i'm looking for there nice nice look how whenever we walk try cannon how consistent she was why was she consistent there well for 30 days everywhere we go walk try cannon we're very consistent we leave her on a loose rein the only time we pick her up is when she tries to take us somewhere we don't want to go why is she inconsistent gating because she doesn't have any practice here so she's not used to being held up she's not used to being confined but notice with all her inconsistency in her movement where she's trying to figure out where to put her head that I try to stay as consistent as possible. My legs are a little busy because I'm trying to drive her forward and keep her engaged, but my hands are very steady and very quiet because I want her to get real comfortable in the face so I can continue to drive her into my bridle. I love those stops when we go from pressure, 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 my legs are on her, my legs are on her, my legs are on her. The second I take my legs off, her butt just slides down under her. A horse that stops with their butt under them is a lot more likely to start with their butt under them. I want every time that I pick up here, she's already, she, she should already be thinking about going forward. Look how high I have my hands. Oh. I have my hands high because I want to see from her throat latch to her chest is vertical. That she's as close to head high up here as possible. Once she gets up here and I'm driving her forward, her butt's going to come under her. We're picking her head up, picking her chest up, and driving her butt under her. And then in the future, once she's comfortable and steady there, look how soft and easy she is. Walt trot her cannon with her head down here. Well, how'd she get that? We softened her in the walk, in the trot, and in the canter with her head down. Now, we're gonna pick her head up and put her in frame for her to have a lot of action in the front and drive in the butt. And whenever you see every now and then she'll go and she'll kinda shut down because she's not soft up here yet. And yes, there's two, wherever you're gonna put her head, you want her to be soft there. So, if we put her head down first, it's very easy to get a horse soft on a loose rein, getting them moving their body, getting them moving forward. Now, when we ask them to pick their head up, we have to get them soft up here too. So I'm kind of picking your head up here. Soft and loose there, nice, much better. And then little by little, watch my pinky, it'll reach down and say, excuse me. There we go, that time, that's it. That time she gave without stopping. Let's see if we can turn. Whenever she gets a little stiff right there, my left pinky, there we go. Left pinky, side checker. When she wants to can her, I don't reprimand her for it. I just look, looking to soften her up here to the inside, to the inside, to the inside. Nice, and ho. Oh. Notice I try to stop her when she's gating. If she just gets in a full blown trot, that's okay. But usually if I stop her when she's just flat out trotting, I will stop her and start her again to try to drive her butt under her. This horse is gonna be so fast gating, it's gonna be crazy. So we're doing it in a round pen where the microphone can pick you up and you can see. I would probably do this in a, a straighter area. I might start with the small circles like this, but as soon as she figured out how to give her head up here into the inside, go ahead and put her on the fence and let her cover some more ground. Because as long as her stride is, I bet she's gonna be a lot happier covering ground and really being able to extend which really doesn't happen here in the round pen. But again, it's a great place for education and a great place for talking it out and kind of seeing what we're doing up close and personal. But this filly right here is gonna gate like an absolute charm. You see the difference in horses when I have the reins down and she's trotting and cantering versus now that I start picking her head up. Right now, the tip of her nose is a little out. That's okay. You don't start finished. 
you start where you start. You start green. You start with them not knowing. So if her head's up and I'm starting to hear that four beat gate off and on, as she gets more comfortable here and I'm able to move her around and drive her forward with my leg and I don't have to be busy with my leg. Notice when I cannon her, it's not an energy thing. It's a not understanding thing. When I ask her to canter, I asked her one time, she cantered, and I never, my legs never kicked her again, never asked her again. But now that I'm gating, you see my legs busy trying to keep her in motion. That's because I have her in a place that she's not comfortable with yet, a place that she's not educated to yet. So she, she's wanting to shut down. She's wanting to, to drop her head and relax. So you see my legs busy. Within one, two, three days, I ask her to go forward. She's going to leave her head right here. She'll be flexible left and right with her head up. And then when we're comfortable there, then we'll start bringing that, the tip of that nose downward. Then we'll start, my hands are right up here. I'm gating her ridiculously obvious, like everything we do up here. They'll start dropping down to the box. Anybody that's ever been to the show ring, we're talking about that six by six, that where your hands are supposed to be, it doesn't start there, guys. It starts wherever it needs to start, however ridiculous it needs to start. Something as simple as moving her butt. Look how ridiculous I am that I bring her face all the way around here to move her butt, like so and I come all the way here, hand to her shoulder to move her shoulder, it's the same difference as when I want her head to come up that I pick my hands up like so, almost up by her ears. But look, we're already starting to, we're already starting to see her motion change. We're already starting to see one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. We're already starting to get that first gait out of her. Be obvious so the horse understands crystal clear communication is the pathway to success and then day by day we'll bring our hands lower and lower and she'll know to keep her hands up ready for, some Q &A? ready for some q a absolutely so for those that don't know a lot about gating horses you've talked a little bit about why you bring their head up um, for those that are used to riding on a loose rein with other horses that might see that as something different or weird or uncomfortable for the horse to be with a higher headset how does that help them gate and figure that out and get comfortable with them all right, guys, so the question was, how do you get that horse to have its head up and gait? And if it's weird, why do gated horses have their head up? Well, it's like this. If they put their head down, you see this Philly flat trot. Just, I mean, you would never be able to tell she's a gated horse if I left her head down. That gated horse needs its head up because that drives its butt underneath it and it helps it elevate in the front end and have more action in the front end. Whenever we do this and we pick that horse's head up and drive his butt under him, now his back feet are landing first. And that's when you start to hear the one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, those feet landing independently, which means there's always three foot on the ground and one foot picking. That's what makes gated horses so smooth. Um, so basically she knows how to gate, but not when to gate, is that correct? Yeah, so, so Benny here is a marchador, a mangalaga filly from Brazil. And that means she's a gated breed. So she has the mechanics to, to gate and she knows how to gate. She just doesn't know how to gate on cue. The same way your unstarted quarter horse out on the field knows how to canter, but that doesn't mean he can canter good under saddle. You have to develop that and refine that. That's exactly what we're doing for Benny here is she knows how to gate. She's super gated. Now we just have to show her how to do it. But notice she's been here for over a month and we have not asked for it yet. That's the secret. A lot of times people get in trouble with gated horses because they're trying to gate from day one as opposed to getting the horse educated on their saddle, going through the respect series, making sure they're comfortable carrying a person. I can't worry about how she's carrying me if she's not comfortable carrying me to start with. Can you show or explain your exaggerated hand position by not giving her her head? When your hands are up, how are you holding her? But you're not holding her. She's finding her own release. For those that haven't seen gated horses before, it might look like you're holding her face the whole time. How do you show where your hands are at and how you're giving her those releases and letting her find her head set? Great question. How do you pick your hands up without holding her and inhibiting that forward motion? How I want to be able to pick her head up, show her that I want her head up, but I don't want to shut her down from going forward because if I kick on her and don't let her go forward, then she's not going to, she's going to pop. She's going to jump one way, jump the other because she won't have, so whenever I'm doing this, if her head's down, down here. When I pick these reins up, all my energy's up. Look how loose the reins are. I'm not holding a constant contact. I'm just showing her, hey, I want your head up here. And right here, look in between, look how those reins jiggle. It's because I'm not holding her physically from going forward. I'm just showing her, hey, I want you up here. If I wanted her to trot, 
the difference would be is I would put her head here and I would never pick up my hands and I would start letting her trot just like this and you'll see now that I'm not holding her head up she doesn't have her head to the same place and she's about halfway in between now because this whole session I've asked for her to have her head up uh, she usually carries her head lower than that so just suggesting it by having your hands up and letting them bump your hands and, and find that freedom can you show us your hand placement without moving her off kind of how you're holding her hands and how you're able to i like to have my slack to one side i like to have i like to have my slack off to one side and grabbing one hand usually the outside hand the reins doubled up what that does for me and i learned this in the in the show ring in my childhood is the more steady my hands could be the more steady my horse is gonna be. So I'm a lot more steady here than here. When my hands are moving and loosey-goosey all over the place and kind of wandering, well, her head's gonna wander. The more I ride around with my hands locked in, and right now I kind of have to be obvious and up here, as she gets more and more finished, my hands will get more locked in, my elbows will come back to my side, my hands will end up here with her gating, and my hands will be so solid and so locked in that she'll stay away from them. No matter what box that I draw for her, she is gonna find to stay behind my hands because that's where she's comfortable. And she's, this is the beginning of her figuring that out, how to stay away from my reins to make herself comfortable. So for the people that are at home working on this, starting and teaching a horse how to gate, is it something you're gonna to wanna to do if you don't have a lot of experience with gated horses? Because how do you know that they're shaking their head because they're trying to figure it out and they're just learning that pressure versus they're shaking their head because you're not giving them the releases they need? So this is a great question. If I'm at home and I've never ridden a gated horse and I'm trying to teach this, what's gonna happen? Well, it's like anything. If you're trying to go somewhere you've never been before, it's a lot harder to find. So hopefully your horse is just naturally gated enough and just jumps into it so easily that you have no issues. If you have a horse that you know it's mother, you know it's father, you have papers on it, it's a gated horse, it will gate. The only gated horses I've ever met in my life that don't gate are gated horses that are rescues or grade horses that they don't know the parents this is a gated horse who's this mammy oh you don't know it's mammy who's this pappy oh you don't know it's pappy what i'm getting at is all gated horses will gate if they're physically sound it's just a matter of fixing their balance but if you're uneducated with gated horses it's the same thing if you're looking for a flying lead change and you've never had a horse that's had a flying lead change the odds of somebody teaching it to you and you being able to find it on your home they're very slim because you don't know what you're feeling for. So in those cases, it's good to have mentorship. It's good to have somebody around that knows what they're feeling for that can help you. Because these are like some of the fine details. Now don't get me wrong. Some gated horses, you start, you put a saddle on them, you sit down on them, they're gating. This filly in particular is not one of those. Uh, we started her, we did all things, and gate just didn't come where she's snapping out on her own. So if you have a filly like this, you might need a little help if you've never trained a gated horse before. Why are there some horses out there that can naturally easily gait on a loose rein and never have to be taught how to collect their head versus horses that have to have a little extra help. Why do some horses gait just right off the bat, even on a loose rein, and other horses have to be taught? That's a great question. Why are some people natural basketball players and me, I couldn't put a ball on a hoop if my life depended on it? Some, some horses are naturally good dancers and they can, they can gait right off no problem, and some horses have two left feet and they have to be taught and balanced and groomed when I say we can get any horse to gate, we can. I was led to believe as a youth that that's not true, that only naturally gated horses can gate and the ones who aren't natural can't gate. We might not be able to get them to gate at a national caliber level. So that horse that just naturally gates right off from the beginning, that horse might be a better gator, might be easier at it. And as you start refining them, they have a lot more talent at it. Sometimes horses, they're a little awkward, a little unbalanced, and you have to help them a little bit. So not every horse can gate on a loose train. She asked, is not every horse can gate on a loose rein? A lot of times, they, a lot of horses can't gate on a loose rein from the beginning. If you show this horse how to gate and we get her very fixed and comfortable here, this horse that doesn't, didn't gate off naturally on her own. Watch her in a month from now, when we have her gating and that's where she's comfortable, we'll be able to put her on a loose rein and she's gonna stay gating. But whenever we have her head here and she knows to keep her head here, she'll be able to get there. But it's all gonna come down to how does she balance? Can we get her head where we want it? Can we drive her butt where we want it? If we can do those two things, we can get even her to get on a loose rein. Do you have more questions on here? 
difference in between a full gating off and then now not being able to gate? Great question. What's the difference between a full gating off and then not being able to gate on the saddle? Well, when that foal was gating off, she didn't have somebody sitting on her back. A lot of times you putting that saddle on will change how they are. The other thing, that foal gating off is as comfortable as they want to be. Or maybe they were gating off when they were spooked. A lot of times it's the same way under saddle. They were so comfortable on their own in the field just moseying on around that they're gating because they're relaxed. You put somebody on in a tense, tight situation and they haven't got the horse broken enough and now the horse is tense and tight so they're pacing. Uh, or maybe they, you start riding them around they're pretty lazy under saddle and there's not enough energy so they're trotting. Uh, trot is on one end of the spectrum, pace is on the other end of the spectrum, and gait is balanced in the middle. Usually your trotty horse is going to be your quiet horse, your lazy horse, your horse with the head down, heavy on the forehand. Your pace is going to be head high, tense, nervous, tight. Those horses usually are worse to fix because people with spur and crop on the horses already nervous and scared get them more tense and rigid and they just pace even harder. So for that trotty horse, you see us picking her, her head up and adding any energy to her. For that pacey horse, you'll see us dropping their head and getting them relaxed and soft and easy. In regards to working on a horse like this or in any situation, can you explain degrees of pressure and how to get a horse that doesn't want to go to go? Like, what do you start with first? You threw your hands out to the side on this horse. You kissed to her. How would you escalate from that if she didn't understand what you were asking to get what you want and then go back from that? Great question. So the question was, what are the different uh, variances of pressure getting them to go forward? And what would you do differently if that horse didn't want to go forward? This goes right back down to the basis of getting them broke under saddle first. Just regular colt starting, uh, natural horsemanship, going through the respect series and getting that horse knowing how to move forward. If the horse was stuck, number one, if they didn't want to go forward, I wouldn't be worried about gating. I would be worried about getting her butt, her head to her butt and moving her butt around until forward seemed like the thing to do. And then showing that horse that she has the freedom to move forward. If your horse is stuck, you're trying to gate them forward, you touch the reins and they shut down, they won't go forward, odds are you need to go back to the fundamentals and just get that horse moving forward, even if it means cantering, even if it means uh, surging off, give them a loose rein and have them freely move forward. The way that this filly already on day one is already starting to pick it up, she has complete understanding of go forward and she's soft in the bridle, so now we're starting to put those two things together. When it takes you a long period of time to get a horse gating, it's because we're trying to fix the fundamentals. So when a horse comes in and and all they want is for the horse to gate, and it takes us 60 or 90 days to get them gating. What really happened, it didn't take us 60 or 90 days. It took us 60 or 90 days to get the horse broke enough to accept going forward and giving the pressure, giving and going at the same time. But in this case, the first thing I want to do is pick up the reins, look up, sit up, and put my legs on. Then I, a lot of times you'll see me throw my hands out to the side. When I do that, I'm keeping the same contact on my hands. I'm kicking it with my legs. I'm kissing to her. You have the, the reins. You can pop her on the neck with that. Just anything just to get her attention. But that comes with the same. The reason it's so easy to move this filly is because, again, she's been through the respect series. She's been colt started. She's been on trail rides. She already has forward. So then getting her to go forward while gating, forward is not the, the problem. It's just a matter of getting her balanced and framed up now. Gating, but breaks into a high-headed canter to keep up with the other riders. What can I do to prevent her from breaking into the canter? And then when I actually want the canter, how can I get her to bring her head down? What exercises can I do? Great question. So a horse with a high-headed gait and likes to break into the canter high-headed when the horses move off. So if she's getting left by the other horses and she's at the peak of how fast she can gait, then it's just a matter of saying, okay, your, your head's high. Either you want her to stay gating and let the other horses leave her or give her her face and let her canter off. If she canters off with her head high, we want to come back to the control the head, control the horse series where we start asking for that horse to bring his head down and then putting a ceiling on her where she knows that she can move forward with the head down so that when we canter, we can canter her off on a loose rein. And we're not really worried. So right here, I want her to know the difference. Hey, I'm putting your head down. I'm not even going to pick on it because I just asked her to gate the whole. Uh, I just asked her to gate the whole session. Now she's trying to gate for me. 
I would just pick on that horse and let them know, put your head down, canter on a loose rein, put your head down, canter on a loose rein. And that's how we teach our gator horses, how our horses that already gate but don't know how to canter, we put a ceiling on them and show them how to canter off on a loose rein with their head down by continuously pressuring and releasing until they look to put their head down. So when I gather up on both reins here, you'll see she'll start putting her head down and we release. Putting her head down and release. This is where you find your trot, your loose rein walk, and your loose rein canter. But that's a whole nother session and a whole nother lesson. Where can they find videos like that to learn more to be able to do both with their horses? If you're looking for anything like this, if you're trying to get your horses gating, we have a whole series on it, cantering on a loose rein, getting your gated horse to canter, all these things, you can find it at Team MG uh, on our membership club. And we have all the videos, all the series uh, of just how to do just this. How we have this horse, walk, trot, canter, obstacles, trail, the respect series that I keep referring to, which is basically our holy grail are what we start with and the guidelines that we follow to get a horse nice, quiet, easy, and gentle to deal with. I find that it's not difficult to teach a horse. It's difficult to get the horse in the right mindset to want to learn. It's not difficult to teach kindergarten and first grade. The lessons in kindergarten and first grade are not complicated. One plus one equals two. A, B, C, and then D comes, E comes. That's not the difficult part. It's teaching the first graders and the kindergartners. That's the difficult part because they act like kindergartners and first graders. Your horses are the same way getting them respectful and getting their undivided attention. Like you see this little filly here, she has been paying every ounce of her attention has been on us the whole time. And because of that, she's very easy to teach. She's been a pleasure to teach today and you can already see her trying to pick it up and trying to anticipate. But you can find all that out on the TMG membership clubs. When working on gating with a young horse, is it better to ride in a round pen or in an arena? Whenever working on gating with a young horse, is it better to work in a round pen or an arena? So much of it depends on the in particular horse, and I know that sounds vague, but if I have a horse that really wants to move forward and has a lot of movement forward, then a round pin is good because you're shutting them down a little bit. You're compacting them a little bit. If you have a horse like this one that doesn't really have a lot of forward and has a lot of extension, then an arena where she can really cover ground and move easier, move freely. So if you have a lazier horse, getting that horse in the arena, getting them moving more is probably better. If you have a hot horse that is has all the forward that you need, now you're just trying to round it up, getting that horse to move in a round pin is probably easier. Two more questions and I'm done. Um, where do I start in teaching my Missouri Fox Trotter how to neck rein? What videos in the membership club would help with that? Would they need to go through the respect series first? So there's a Missouri Fox Trotter. The way that you get her to neck rein and what series, what videos she goes to, if you go to control the head, control the horse, we have a series all on that, all on getting control of that horse's head and being able to move his feet accordingly. If you go through those series, after you've gone through the respect series, you're going to get neck reining in no time. Uh, neck reining for us usually, once we've been through the respect series, we're talking about just a couple days and you'll have that horse going everywhere you want one-handed. How do I get a horse to gate faster? I know she can because she has, but seems to break after she hasn't been ridden in a while. Great question. I have a horse and I know she can gate faster because she has before, but now she hasn't been ridden in a while and now she wants to break. I want you to think the rounder your circles are, the shorter your gate is. The straighter your fence is, the faster your gait is. So if I'm trying to go faster, notice that this whole time I've been tipping her nose to the inside. If I was looking for speed, I would tip that horse's nose to the outside and I would, there we go. I would sit back over her butt like so. You see a lot of the racking horses, which are the race horses, and they sit back like this way back. Well, the answer is simple. Whenever we're sitting far back here and we're driving that horse forward, we're putting all the weight over their butt, they're digging more and more with their rear end. Just like a boat that's accelerating, the front end is coming out of the water, the back end is driving into the water. The more we do that, the more elevation she gets with her front end, and we can tip her nose to the rail a little bit so that she finds comfort, comfort there. She's gonna go faster and faster. And anytime she tries to break into a canter, you just side check her just a little bit. You just touch and release the reins to keep her balance over her back end. The more and more you do that, she's just gonna go faster and faster every day. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in. We are gonna do more and more Horse Talk Lives for you, bringing you a lot more information. Put in the comments below what you would like to see in the next Horse Talk Live. Here at Gascon Horsemanship, we have everything you can think of from quarter horses to, to Mustangs, to Pasos, to Mangalagas, to all kinds of horses. 
at all stages of training. We're doing everything from driving to trick training. We're doing liberty. We're getting horses gating. We're cantering. We're sliding. We're roping. We're doing all these things. Whatever you want to see in the next Horse Talk Live, put it in the comments below and we'll do it. If you need help with your horse, we have videos after videos and we have online community that we're talking weekly. We're always talking to each other on Zoom calls. People are sending in videos of how to and what am I doing wrong and how do I fix it. We discuss these things every week on our Zoom calls at Team MG, the, the membership. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you all next week. Horse Talk Live.